gonna turn this way down. Because this game likes to be loud as far. Especially whenever the music starts. Dude. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I have no idea. Everything is wrong. Today. You are a broken individual today. <laughs> Spills ketchup all over himself. Don't talk about it! Spills no soda all over himself. I'm gonna end up unplugging the mic, watch. It's, it's gonna happen. Something is going to happen today that is my fault. That you're not gonna be happy about. <laughs> Tells racist joke. <laughs> and it's like, Joey, come on. Come Save those for when we're not recording. <laughs> well, wait, you act like I... <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's not funny, like... It's funny to I'm me. I'm not a racist, I swear. Yeah, he's just... He hates everything else. Yeah, I hate people in general. He's I hate everyone equally. Bigoted, bigoted, bigoted Bill? Or bigoted Joe? That's JoJo Part 9. I don't know why, but that... Mm, never mind. Welcome back to... Igarashi. When they cry. Imatsubushi. Were you trying to think of how to say it in Jap Japanese? Two. Japan no, I, two. I know how to say when they cry in Japanese. Yeah. Igarashi no nakokoro ni. Yeah. Imatsubushi. And this is episode two. Chapter two. This Chapter two of chapter four. <laughs> like, you're really fucking with me. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get into oh, it. Oh, um... Before I forget, sync the audio, because I don't think we did it last time. And I oh, kinda we did the up and down thing. Up and down, and up and down. Alright, so, forgive me if I die. Uh, it's like, it's always a toss-up. It's a 50-50 if my cough is going to be a regular cough, or a dry heave that leads to me vomiting. Let's hope that you don't vomit. Let's hope that every toss lands heads. Do you have a bag next to you, just in case? <laughs> Blake, are you just gonna... <laughs> right onto your computer? Like, no, I'm gonna throw up on you. That's not funny. I mean, you've been covering in other shit today, so what not that... Shut up! <laughs> At least it won't taste like... It won't smell like ketchup. Yeah, it'll smell like throw up. I'd rather but which smell... is worse? I'd rather smell like ketchup than throw up. I don't know, I think ketchup smells pretty bad. Hide the mouse, hide the mouse, hide the mouse, hide the mouse. Hide the mouse! Waking up at a cheap hotel in the city was by no means pleasant. I remembered even during the long camping trips we had during grade school, I wanted to get home quickly, counting out the days left on my fingers. Waking up this morning, I was somehow reminded of that. Was it a need to be with my wife when she gave birth? A particular type of homesickness? As a productive member of society, as a public servant, bound to fulfill his duties, it was pathetic indeed. Those negative emotions faded as I downed my breakfast, which was surprisingly not half bad. Three stars. The meeting with the informant that Oishi had provided would be tonight. Until then, I couldn't just be lazing around. The Unikafuchi Defense Alliance was protesting the dam's construction in various ways. Included in this was a strategy for improving public relations, which could be categorized into two major forms, combative and peaceful. In regards to the former, as an attempt to keep law enforcement in check, they appealed to the public's sympathy by highlighting the oppressive and inhumane tactics of the police and the brutality of the riot squads. The latter, peaceful route, stressed how precious the natural surroundings of an Amizawa was, seeking people who would oppose the dam on environmental grounds. As part of that, the village of an Amizawa had invited celebrated zo zoologists and botanists, as well as environmental groups, to advertise the nature surrounding the town. According to the news, in recent years there had been a group calling itself an Amazon Nature Watching, setting up free sightseeing tours. I would have liked to have taken advantage of the opportunity, but when I called the village administrative offices, they responded that it was too late to put in an application for the tour, and they were still undecided as to when they'd be doing another one. I see. So there's no applications for next time. Too bad. Are you a member of an environmental group? Or maybe somebody from a magazine? No, just here privately. Privately? Then you're a tourist? Something like that. 
It's my hobby to take pictures that display how beautiful nature can be. I read in a magazine that there were some precious nature reserves here, so I was looking forward to it. I knew there was an article that had something like that written in it, but I hadn't actually read it. Was it... A, what? Was it this ad-libbed lie not going to work? I knew that doesn't look right. That does not look right. Was it this ad-libbed lie not going to work? <laughs> ad-libbed lie. It, it sounds weird. However, contrary to my expectations, the person I was speaking to laughed happily. <laughs> then come, come. The village is a little busy right now, but you're totally welcome here. <laughs> In that case, I'll gracefully accept the offer. Thank you. How are you getting around? Car? If that's the case, could I ask for your license plate number? No, no, there's no ulterior motive behind that. <laughs> that was probably related to the checkpoints they had set up on the way to the village. If I didn't give them my license plate number, I'd most likely be hindered in various ways. I thought about using the car I had borrowed from the prefecture, but I was lost in whether it was okay to tell them that plate number. If the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance was behind this incident. There was no guarantee that they wouldn't be able to find out who I was. I had to play it safe, so I elected to refrain from using the car. No, actually, I'm not using a car. If there's a bus or something, I'd prefer that. We do have a bus, actually. The route is going to be dis discontinued soon, though. You can take that. It departs from Okinomiya Station. Thank you very much. I'll look out for it. When will you be coming? Is it your first time in Anamizawa? If it is, you must be unsure about a lot of things. If you let me know, I can have someone show you around. Oh, no, I couldn't ask for that much of you. Wahaha, ha 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 ha. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's just a bit, a bit of PR we do to protect nature around the village. Judging by what I saw at the checkpoints, the villagers were at the very least wary of outsiders. That's why in order to move in and out of the village freely, I had to travel with some, somebody like Oishi or, or side with the dam protests. Have any interest... And the natural environment surrounding the village tied it to, into the peaceful type of PR that the village was using. I was a bit against having a watchdog attached to me, but that might actually work out in my favor. The entire village was fired up about the dam protest, so I might be lucky enough to hear some especially candid opinions from the residents. Given that, there was no real reason for me to refuse their offer. Is it really alright? If so, that'll really help. After that, I was shown the bus schedule and directed to which bus I should get on. Somebody would come and meet me at the bus stop in the village. After showing me around a spot I'd taken interest in, there was no doubt they'd bring me to somewhere like an anti-dam information center. Then, over a cup of tea, they'd try and indoctrinate me into accepting their principles and beliefs. Well, if that was their aim, there would be a lot of freebies involved. The world is, the world is about give and take, after all. I couldn't be going in a suit. I pulled some plain clothes out of my travel case and changed to something more casual. After that, after calming down my, by, after calming down by watch, watching some local television, I left the hotel and set out for Okinomiya Station. The bus ride that I was told would soon to be discontinued certainly didn't look that way. There was more enough trips on the schedule, and the number of passengers was by no means sparse. It was the main link to Okinomiya, the only town in the area. The types of passengers that stood out were older folk who didn't look like they could drive, and housewives who didn't seem like they had a license. If the area was submerged at the bottom of the lake, it wouldn't matter if there was a bus route. That's why it was going to be discontinued in the unnatural scheme of things. I could catch a glimpse of the government's intent of cutting off their means of transportation to bully the village into emptying out sooner. makes sense. According to the documents, talks between the Ministry of Construction and the locals broke down quite early. The government decided from the start to take an aggressive stance on the matter. It was like the fairy tale with the north wind and the sun trying to get the travelers the traveler remove his cloak. Even their bullying had meaning to it. The reason why the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance resisted so violently was because the government was doing unseemly things like that. I was somebody who lived in Tokyo, so for a village or two out or two out of the boonies, like this to be submerged didn't seem like a big deal. But I guess for somebody actually living here, 
it would be a vitally huge problem. No shit. This route will be continued on the XF of XS. Thank you for your patronage up to this point. We look forward to your continued patronage on our other lines. Hey. Thank you. XX Transportation. Gazing lazily at the notice of discontinued service posted inside the inside the bus, I counted down the number of stops until the designated one. Along the way, we passed through the checkpoint before without stopping. They knew what time the bus was coming, so they had opened up the barricade ahead of time. From here on out was enemy territory. My palms had, at some point, become coated in a thin film of sweat. <clears throat> it's gonna be hard to get through this one. <clears throat> ah, now we're arriving at Ukita Waterworks. Now arriving at Ukita Waterworks. Are there any passengers disembarking? I hurriedly pressed the stop request button as the designated stop was announced. But none of the numerous passengers to be getting off here meant that it must be quite a remote place. <coughs> ah. In actuality, the stop I got off was got off at was so abnormally run down that I could tell it was barely used. As soon as I stepped out, an intense atmosphere completely different than the interior of the bus assailed my body. Right now, Oishi or Motodai weren't beside me. That's right. At present, I was alone in the middle of enemy territory. My adversaries probably thought I was just an ordinary tourist, but that was nothing more than a ruse. But if by some mistake my true identity was to be exposed... It brought back the terrifying words I had heard at the prefectural office that if somebody was attacked in Hanami's all with a knife, there wouldn't be any evidence left behind. I didn't seem suspicious, did I? My clothing was currently casual. It was exactly the type of clothing that a city slicker that viewed the countryside as a wholesome getaway would wear. A camera and knapsack. Inside were various things needed for hiking. It's not that dude. It's not Tomatake. I know you're thinking it's Tomatake, but it's not Tomatake. It's not? It's not! Because we got this dude's full name. Unless he's going under, mm -hmm. like, a cover. An alias. It could be an alias, but... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. We'll could see. be Tomatake. Could not be Tomatake. Comes around every now and comes then. Comes around. I got excited. This yeah. this is exciting. <laughs> at, the, at the prospect of it? Yeah. It was still only June, and maybe it was unusual, but the sun was shining down like it was already the middle of summer. The fact that I didn't bring a hat must seem odd. No, it was something to be that... It, w it wasn't something to be that concerned about. It's alright. I was just a normal tourist. Just normal. Was there anything suspicious about me? Asking that as I turned around to look at the bus that was departing. All the passengers by the window were staring down at me. Silently. They were staring right at me. As if they had seen right through my proud little outfit. Just staring. Looking down on me. Countless stairs rained down like needles on me, for the windows opened to the air out of the bus. All that rained down were stairs. None of them were saying a word. But all the more, their silent stares told me more than a million words could. Hurry up and go back to Tokyo, you outsider. No, I'm... There was no reason for me to speak. My quiet voice was drowned out by the sound of the engine. The bus, as if to torment me, set out slowly and, after doing more than enough to intimidate me, sped off. A thin film of sweat began to rise from my entire body. According to the documents, it was a village that seemed wary of outsiders. Its population was small as well. If they saw an unfamiliar face, they would be quick to identify that face as an outsider. On top of that, nobody else had gotten off this stop. It was a bus that... It was a bus stop that they normally just passed by, passed on by. Somebody actually getting off there, there was no doubt that had drawn some attention. But this wasn't a slip-up. 
They were the ones who directed me to get off at this stop. There was nothing to worry about. I knew that I was just nervous since this was my first undercover assignment. My more seasoned colleagues referred to you referred to us as the new generation that didn't know how to lose their cool, but that wasn't true at all. Phew. In order to calm my breath my breathing down, I exhaled the unpleasant air residing in the pit of my stomach. I couldn't help but pray Fuck the dogs. Right. I couldn't help but pray that my apprehensions would disappear like the white clouds of exhaust expelled from the bus. There was a small shred there to sever the shelter, serve as shelter if it rained, and it was there I decided to wait. Inside the shed, one wall was plastered with posters advertising the, the damn opposition efforts. It was like the heartfelt screams of the villagers were recorded on that wall. Inside that shelter, I felt an inexplicable pleasure, pressure. It wasn't like I had any real relation to the dam project, but it still made me feel hesitant about being inside there. That was just how filled with the force of denial that space was. And inside that uneasy space was a girl. Inside that shed covered in words, written in broad brushstrokes, rating the po policies regarding the dam and calling for action. There was a girl sitting there with a drowsy gaze as if half asleep. The two images clashed so much that I could only stand there dumbfounded for a moment, trapped in such a surreal environment. If I stepped inside, who knew what kind of oafish noises I would accidentally make? I couldn't be disturbing this girl's slumber like that. Having thought this, I gave up on entering the shed. I was just a sleeping kid, so what was I so worked up about? Finally, I realized. This girl, to us as a married couple, was the very image of our ideal child. Even after numerous examinations at the hospital, we didn't know for sure what our child's gender was. Whether we could tell if they were a boy or a girl was in the end dependent on whether or not we could get an image of their genitalia. There was, of course, no guarantee that it was a girl, but with things the way they were, the possibility was high. Even so, Yukie had been saying that the chances that it was a boy or girl were even. But in my heart, I had already decided that her coming child was a girl. Since the day I decided that, that until now, it was so fun to imagine how our child would grow up that I couldn't help myself. Amongst those numerous... Amongst those, those numerous imagined forms, the one that I thought to be the most ideal had materialized right in front of me. Of course, a little of it was due to the circumstances. In my ideal image, her hair would be on the short side. The girl in front of me, though, had long hair. It was almost if somebody had taken my ideal and made some small adjustments. It certainly wasn't something unpleasant. Even so, I felt like I was sullying her just by looking at her, at her like that. She had an immaculate, no, a divine air about her. It's gonna be Rika. <laughs> well, I know what your character is, but it's... What? The girl with an angelic smile with a yawn wide enough to, you could see her molars woke up all of a sudden. I didn't mean to peep. But locking eyes with a girl who had just woken up like this somehow made me feel like I was playing a prank on her. I wasn't doing anything shady, but I became flustered. The girl spoke. No, cried out? Meep. Meep? Like that character on the show with the puppets? <laughs> Meep? With the orange hair? I thought it was just one of those greetings kids do. So in order to prove I wasn't a suspicious person, I responded in kind. Meep. <laughs> Meep? Meep. <laughs> the girl stared at me dubiously with a doll-like expression. Cute, but cold and hard to read. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. There was, after all, an unfamiliar man right in front of her when she woke up and responded with meat when she said the same. Suspicious. She definitely thought I was suspicious. Meat. 
Meep. Meep. <laughs> we were both at a loss for words. No. The only one lost was me. <laughs> the girl in front of me, as if inquiring about my motives, stared at me intently. In this silence, I felt like I was the one who had to say something first. Damn it! This girl was way better at interrogating somebody than Oishi. <laughs> I'm not anybody suspicious. I'm. Nipa. <laughs> Ni. Nipa. Nipa. <laughs> What I could have only described as a cold expression suddenly blossomed, blossomed into a smile, one that soon infected me. <laughs> might be familiar with the term angelic smile. To me, it was like that phrase was just created to describe the smile she just gave me. The girl smiling was saying, Nipa, probably wanted me to return the favor in kind. That's right, this was a kid's form of communication. Having the other person emulate what you just did was a rudimentary form of mutual understanding. It Nipa! Nipa! It was a beautiful afternoon in the early summer. <laughs> what was I doing? Nipa! 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 Yeah, Nipa! Nipa, Nipa! Fucking <laughs> Rika. Well, whatever. This was interesting in its own way. <laughs> if making somebody happy with just a smile was the work of angels, then this girl was definitely one of them. I couldn't help but pray that my own child, who was soon to be born, would grow up to be like this girl. A strangely gentle moment was finally brought to the end by the arrival of a car. An older person waved at me from the driver's seat, a dry smile plastered on their face. Hi there, good afternoon! Sorry for being late. You're the tourist who phoned yesterday, right? Ah, uh, uh, yes! Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm running a little behind because of the farm. Hop right on in! It looks like the weather isn't going to hold up for much longer, so I'll show you around real quick. Huh? The weather? It changes fast around here. There'll probably be evening showers again today. If that happens, you won't be able to take any pictures. Come on, get in, get in! Neat. Turning around, the girl was standing right behind me with an intrigued expression. Body language somehow reminded me of a stray cat that followed you around after you played with it. So charming. <laughs> well, is an Arika Chama! Praise be, praise be! Meepa! A girl named Rika with an immaculate smile, and an old man praising her while rubbing prayer beads in his hands. It was a rather mysterious sight to behold. Are you going to work, Makino? not exactly work per se. I was asked by the mayor to show around a youngin who came to the village for some sightseeing. A youngin who came to the village for sightseeing? The girl Rika-chan said that with a smile as she clung onto my arm. Well, yeah. I heard that this village is surrounded by a precious nature reserve, so I very much wanted to record that with my camera. You know, the odds of this being Tomatake just going by the name Tomatake is getting higher and higher the more I think about it. Because if he Cause dies every... Yep, he dies every time. And he's someone that... But Tomitaki keeps coming back, so I don't know why he keeps coming back. Well, I assume we'll figure that out later. If this is Tomitaki in disguise. What I'm thinking is his investigation <coughs> was furthered into... Like, they had him keep coming back. Yeah. And Oishi somehow knew this. Yeah. That's the whole... why the... the uh... I'm, trying to, I'm trying to recall back to previous chapters where... If at all Oishi and Tomatake ever talked to each other. And I don't think they ever did. Outside of, like, the after party. Yeah? I certainly can't remember any instance where they actually talked to each Maybe other. Maybe they never like to be seen with each other. It's possible. They, they don't want people to catch on. Even though I look like this, I really like to take pictures. Tomatake Mark II. That all but confirms it. I'm 
fucking knew it. <laughs> so he took his name from his camera. He's like, what's your name? Tomatake. It's Tomatake. That's my name. Don't look at my camera. <laughs> I invented this camera. <laughs> I bet you that's what he's gonna say, because I feel like that's uh, Rika like reading it off his fucking camera. Temetake Mark II. Huh? Temetake? Huh? Makino. Is it okay if I come along too? I, I couldn't. You could come along, Rika Chama, but there's nothing interesting to see. You should go play near the shrine or something. Sad me. <laughs> a distinctly displeased expression creeped across Mikachan's face. A very sad meep indeed. <laughs> Being able to show one's emotions honestly on their faces was a privilege young children had. If it's not too much of a problem, could you bring this child along with us? When I said those helpful words, another smile spread across Mikachan's face with another nipa as she clung to me again. Ah. Not bad at all. I want this girl to call me Papa. No. Father. Dad. Daddy. Daddy O. Ha! <laughs> Why is this some chapter so much fun? Oh, it's what am I doing? <laughs> Ever since I met this girl. I was completely off. Oh, now I know it's Tamatake, I have to do his voice now. <laughs> Ever since I met this girl, I was completely off my game. Just calm down. <laughs> Nothing I can do, I guess. Rikachama never listens it, even if you say no. Come on, hop on in. Come now, Rikachama's here. The old man descended from the driver's seat and opened up the sliding door of the van, which had Onigafuji Alliance Town Council stenciled on the side. Rikachan brushed me aside, dove into a seat, began bouncing around right away. It seemed like she was thoroughly enjoying the bouncy springs. Come on now, Rikachama. If you're like that, our guest can't sit down. Hey, Rikachama. <sighs> Girls are nice. Nice. What if my child would play around like this, too? No, 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 no. It was, was, written in that guide to raising a child that you shouldn't dote on them. Kids are kids. You don't raise them strictly without spoiling them. You know what? I'm just gonna narration. I'm just gonna do normal. <laughs> just do his voice like that. <laughs> it's soft, it's springy. Neepa! Neepa! <laughs> Neepa! Neepa! Ah! Neepa! Oi! I am definitely going to be a terrible father. <laughs> it was decided that I would be a doting parent before my child was ever born. <laughs> well then, sir, I'll show you around some places that I think look nice. I love how the old guy's just like, yep, yep, this is normal around Rika. <laughs> Have you eaten lunch yet? Well, looks like she got another one. <laughs> yeah! That'll light me up the hotel. Is that so? Well then, let's get going! We're setting off on a tour on an Amazawa. Yay. Um, is it alright if I call you Rikicha? Sure. My name is Rika Furide. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I can already do addition in the ten di tens digit. Oh, is that true? That's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> Like you're gonna just like go into a coughing fit and we just I don't count on my fingers. I can do it all in my head. The way she insisted upon that was just too cute. At some point the nervousness I had about being alone in enemy territory that evaporated like it was never there at all. I'd be at least a little thankful that I met this girl. You know. Well then, let's get going! Time for a Nami Zolid nature watching! The old man stepped on the gas with a great deal of gusto! 
Gusto! <laughs> Sounded like you had a stroke in the middle of that. <laughs> I was actually tightening my throat, ready to release the gusto! Bro, I'm so happy that this is Tomatake. That we get Tomatake. Oh, this back. is totally Tomatake. Oh, does that mean it ends with Tomatake getting his throat ripped out? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> like they, they, they didn't do landscape, they did portrait. <laughs> oh. Is this? It's a long tour. Is this the end of the chapter? Oh, here we go. Uh, question. Is there a person we met before named Makino? I don't remember a band named Nock Makino in previous chapters. No. But I could just not be paying attention or remembering. The old man, who was apparently named Makino. Was he the same Makino that was listed as the auditor of the Onigafuji Defense Alliance? Showed me around the places that were breath all breathtaking. Even though I wasn't really here for sightseeing, couldn't help but be impressed. First of all, this was different from the simple scenery of a city. The scenery of a charming village like this, no matter how mundane it seemed to the villagers, had a tranquil appeal to it. At first, I was only releasing the shutter as part of my tourist act. But midway through, I found myself taking pictures out of their interest. Tourist traps out their own unique lore to them, but there was nothing like that here. I was especially captivated by the unspelled nature of the place. If there wasn't that whole uproar over the dam, I would want to bring the UK with me here some other time. I wanted to breathe in this fresh air as well as show her the rejuvenating verdant scenery. Something like that? Is something like this that interesting? You're a strange person, Akasaka. No, these cylindrical mailboxes are rare nowadays. They have a certain nostalgic air about them. You wouldn't happen to think they're elegant, would you? Ha 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 ha. Is Inami's always fun? Meep. Damn, yeah, meep. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, it's fun. Once she's discharged from the hospital, I'd like to bring my wife here at least once. With the child that would born by that time. Meep. Oh, no. Right now, she's in the hospital waiting to give birth. She's due any day now. No, why are you <laughs> here? It'd be nice if... They're a cute girl like you. Sir, it seems like congratulations are soon to be in order. Still, that's not good. To leave your wife behind and play around in a place like this? I was momentarily at a loss for words. Boom. It was exactly how Makino said. There's no good reason for a man who was waiting for his wife to give birth to be playing around idly in this place. Did I slip up? Did I do that? Ah! Ah! Well, we had already planned this trip to Nami's all a long time ago. My wife's is... My, fa my wife's family is with her, so that's alright. It's fine. It's fine. If you had this plan so far in advance, then how come you didn't make the sign-up deadline for the nature watch? If you did, you could have toured around in a nice bus instead of being cramped up in here. Didn't seem as if Makino was actually digging for anything. But if this conversation continued any longer, it would put some unexpected holes in my cover. Is Makino asking him these questions, or is yeah. it? Okay, it's Makino. It's not Rika. Rika's just kind of reacting to it. Yeah. 
I altered the conversation by pretending to take another picture. Well then, for our last stop, I'll take you to the place with the best view! It was slightly before evening, the sun was still burning brightly, but a cool breeze had begun to mix itself into the air. It seemed my exploration of Anamiza with Rikachan was just about done. The place with the best view? Well, Rikachama, where else could it be but the view from around the shrine? Hearing that, Rikachan smiled even more. Well then, I'll introduce you to my home, Akasaka. Huh? By Rikachan's home, you mean. Huh? <laughs> the shrine! Fuerde Shrine! There's an observation platform. You can see some real pretty scenery. Fuerde Shrine. What? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> the girl who called Furde Shrine her home, Rika, if I remember correctly, her full name was Rika Furde. And Furde was. That's right. One of the three families. Even if the Sonazaki family is said to hold all the actual power, it was still one of the old houses that held some authority. No, more importantly than that right now was Furde Shrine. If I remember correctly, Oishi had told me. On the grounds of the Furude Shrine, there were offices of the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. And since the land around Furude Shrine was private property, police couldn't set foot there heedlessly. Furude Shrine, where even Oishi couldn't simply set foot into. The main base of operations for the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. I had been given the unexpected opportunity to enter there. Couldn't have asked for more. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Please, if you would. Well then, let's get there quick. The weather seems to be getting a little iffy. Mm -mm. <laughs> the sky had suddenly become overcast. Wouldn't be odd if it started raining soon. Cicadas, as if trying to finish their daily allotment of chirps before the evening, cried out even more fervently. Way too soon to be in the chapter. We always have like a halfway point. Commercial break. The van stopped in the shrine's parking lot. Also parked there were numerous other vans with loudspeakers mounted on top of them to act as makeshift propaganda vehicles. On the side of each vehicle was scrawled, The damn project must be demolished. Defend our homeland to the last! No, Oyashiro-sama's anger. Or a slogan of a similar kind. They gave the feeling that, even without using the loudspeakers, there was enough to overwhelm any onlookers. Vertical banners were erected in various places. The, the contents of those banners were similar. They were all objections against the dam or crude insults towards the government. There were horizontal banners, placards, and so on and so forth. They proclaimed that, without a doubt, this was the headquarters of the Onikafuchi Defense Alliance. For Rikachan, however, this hectic place was also her home. We've arrived. She's like that tall. She's like two feet. Eh, eh, gotta get up the stairs. <laughs> I'm home. It's gonna take me an hour to get up these stairs. Rikachan crawled over my lap and exited the vehicle first. Makino had noticed that I was looking at protest banners. The shrine also has the offices of the anti-dam movement. For you, this probably brings back memories of the anti-security treaty conflicts back in the day. <laughs> Student movements against government policies, movements that bordered on terrorist activity, were at one time commonplace, if only in order to garner global attention. Students holding out in lecture halls, brawling, in the riots, brawling with the riot squads that charged in. It was an age where wasting one's youth like that was widely considered a road to glory. It was slightly before my time. I'm not really an activist or anything. I studied without incident and graduated without incident. I don't really agree with the violence or occupations they used to, they used to protest the government's policies. Oh? 
You have quite the nice opinion there. You have an opinion on a policy. Vote for the candidate who shares your view. Or enter the political world yourself and assert your beliefs in a lawful manner. That is the foundation of democracy. I don't think that's something you should challenge with violence. For a youngin, you have some fine beliefs. Saw that feeling of respect reflected in Makino's gaze. At that moment, something tugged at my sleeve. I have no idea what Akasaka is saying. Rikichan, feeling like she was the only one who didn't understand the conversation, had a look of displeasure on her face. That expression was so charming, I had to keep myself from grinning like an idiot. It's often said that a father wants to spoil his daughter rotten. I think I understood that feeling very well. Sorry. It was a little bit hard for Rikichan to understand, wasn't it? Japan is a peaceful country, so you have to argue your point in a peaceful manner. You shouldn't resort to violence, in other words. No, no, no matter how much I explained, a girl who was just boasting about being able to carry digits over when adding things probably wouldn't understand. Probably wasn't something to talk about in front of Rikachan anyway. So then, Akasaka. How do you think we should keep our village from being flooded by the dam? Even if I regretted my careless words, it was too late now. Here I was at the main headquarters of an organization telling them that their way of things, way of doing things was illegal. Preaching that violence was not the answer. The complicated feeling had mixed itself in with the rest of Makino's gaze. Then I have finally realized it wasn't that simple. There wasn't a soul who would argue that I was saying what I was saying was in, was cor wasn't correct. Using violence to get one's way was something that everybody knew you shouldn't be proud of. However, right now, Hanamizawa was in a predicament that couldn't be overcome with peaceful means alone. The legality of the Hanamizawa Dam project, through the efforts of the various propaganda campaigns enacted by the Onigafiji Defense Alliance, was being called into question. If they further strengthened their campaign, they might be able to suspend or change the construction plans. But that was at the most just a possibility. If the government proceeded with the construction as planned, it wouldn't be long before this place was at the bottom of the lake. If it wasn't for the unrestrained resistance of the res residents of Namizawa, this place might already have been underwater. We can't live anywhere else other than here. We can't live in the city. The words of this remarkably young girl were all too accurate, carrying with them the screams of the hearts and minds of the residents of Anamizawa. Of course, there was nothing I could say to respond to that. I could only respond to Makino and Rikichan's heavy words with silence. I'm sorry. This isn't a problem that an outsider should lightly just poke their nose into, isn't it? I apologize. Makino, if unsure of how to reply for a while, can only laugh pointlessly. <laughs> It's nothing that concerns guests that make their homes somewhere else. If you enjoyed here, please tell all your friends that Namizawa is a wonderful place, please. If word spreads to dozens, maybe even hundreds of people, then that ridiculous plan to submerge this place at the foot of a dam will eventually fall apart. He followed that with a smile that said, please don't think much of it. Makino letting me not worry that much was really a stroke of good fortune. Becoming infatuated with the, with the idea of making friends with a little girl had me completely forget my apprehension at being in enemy territory. Being reminded of this right before I was going to step foot into their headquarters might have been a good thing. If we had this exchange in the middle of their office, if there was a short-tempered youth in there, they might have come at me. Thinking of how extreme they were, in the worst case, my life could have been in danger. It seemed that I looked like, looked quite despondent at that moment. Makino, thinking he had said something wrong, became flustered, trying to think of a way to improve my mood. I was a bit careless just now. I'm very sorry. No. Don't worry much. Don't worry that much about it. The sights you showed me around the village were all beautiful, wonderful places. I really do want to come here one more time. If this beautiful village is going to be submerged at the bottom of a lake, I can understand why you would fight so desperately. I had somehow managed to use my despondent look to change the topic in my favor. After a bit, Makino had returned to his usual high spirits. It seemed he believed I was completely sympathized 
with his point of view. Now, now, let's leave the talk at that for now. There's a place around here with a really great view. Let's go, Akasaka. Mikachan is seemingly happy to be free from all the boring and gloomy adult talk bounded up the stone steps. There's no real need to run, but in order to catch up with her, I also darted up the steps. There were several tents belonging to the town council erected on the shrine grounds. Inside the tents were several folding tables and chairs, and a number of the older town council members were livening things up with chit-chat. They weren't saying anything incendiary like, The damned project must be destroyed! It was just some relaxed, idle chit-chat between local geezers. The normal sort of calming scenery. At the entrance of a shed that looked like a meeting place, there was a large sign erected like with Onikafuji Defense Alliance headquarters written in bold brush strokes. That was their base of operations. To be honest, it was a bit of a letdown. If you ask what I've been imagining, this is a bit embarrassing, but I have I'd have thought it would be something much more dramatic. With barbed wire fences and barricades. My first impression of the place, though, was completely different from that. It looked like a simple backwater town hall. It didn't look like anything other than that, exactly. The old folks who were chatting had noticed Rikachan's presence. Well, it, well, isn't it Rikachama? It's time for little kids to head on home. This is, this is my home. The old folks guffawed, since she wasn't wrong. From that exchange, I could tell that this Rika Furide girl was loved by everybody. Makino-san, who's that? The tourist who found... That's right. This is the mayor of Inamizawa, Mayor Kimiyoshi. He smiled brightly, but there was no mistaking he would be scary if he got angry. By the looks of things, this old man was the president of Oni Kafuchi Defense Alliance. None other than Kichiro Kimiyoshi himself. Welcome to Namizawa. What do you think? It's a quiet and relaxing place, isn't it? Yeah. I was able to appreciate a multitude of beautiful places throughout the whole day. I'm thankful for being granted this rare opportunity. Ah. Uh. Even though you're one of those youngins, quite the gentleman. Hmm. He's very suspicious. Kichiro? I want to show Akasako a cool place. Thinking that the formalities between myself and the mayor had gone on for too long, Rikachan butted into the conversation. I heard him call the mayor by his first name. I thought it was a little strange, but none of the villagers seemed to mind. A girl of the Furude household, one of the three families. She was probably different than the average villager. Akas Akasaka, over here! Wikichan tugged at my sleeve. Not resisting, I allowed myself to be to be pulled over. And waiting for me was a magnificent view. Magnificent indeed. This is amazing. <laughs> With an observation deck that looked down to the village. They, knowing that this was the best view in the entire village, kept quiet as I stood there, awestruck. I was holding a camera, but I'd completely forgotten to even glance through the viewfinder. This view, no matter what kind of film it was printed on, wouldn't be able to show everything. If there was a way to explain it, it would only be what I would be able to put into words. It was just such a breathtakingly spectacular view that I struggled to find comparison. For a while, I was left awestruck. I could only stand there and wonder. A cool breeze helped abate the heat rushing through my body. That comfortable sensation also left me speechless. Rikachan, who had been holding onto my sleeve the entire time, spoke. This is my favorite spot. As she said that, she showed me another adorable smile. That smile seemed very fleeting. If you ask why, that was because the view from her favorite spot would eventually be submerged under the deep green waters of the damn reservoir. I just can't believe that this village is going to end up at the bottom of a lake. I said it quietly so that only Rikachan could hear it. 
I regretted it as soon as I did. But those words were all too cruel. However, Rikachan didn't let them cast a cloud on her expression. In fact, she replied with a smile. It won't sink. The damn project will definitely go away. It was just like a little girl to say something like that. There was no basis for her saying so. It was just her wish. Hakusaka, do you think this village will be submerged? It's not that I want it to be. I knew how important the dam was. I knew that it was necessary. I just didn't want to recognize the sacrifices that would be made. I agreed with the project in general, but couldn't agree with some of the details. But if it meant that the girl's, this girl's beloved scenery would be, wouldn't be taken away from her, I might be able to object to, uh, to the dam. I might be able to ignore the interests of the nation, the development of Japan, all for the sake of one girl's smile. I'm not really much of a humanist, but how sentimental of me! It won't be submerged. The damn project will soon go away. Her words just weren't just hopes and dreams, <laughs> but were seasoned with a hint of resolve. As if she was talking about an unchangeably predetermined outcome. As surely as the sun rising in the east. It'll be gone soon? Wanting to ask her why she believed that, I turned around. Yes. It'll be gone. What makes you say that? Push. Well, you see... <laughs> she seemed to want an answer, but... As though unable to find the right words, she swallowed back what she was about to say. Regardless of what Akasaka does, the damn project will end this year. It's already been decided. That was a lie. Something like that had already been decided, that the Oni Fuji Defense Alliance would have no reason to continue existing. From my point of view, it was like they were doing nothing more than throwing themselves into an endless battle. If they know the dam project was cancelled, it would feel much more relaxed around here. This village, though, could hardly be called relaxed. For, ed for evidence of that, I just had to remember how charged the atmosphere was at the checkpoint, or at the bus stop. The villagers, with their misplaced resolve, were still fighting. And this girl, even knowing the villagers grim resolve, had already declared their victory. The villagers throwing themselves into this en endless war, and this optimistic girl who said they had already won. That contrast was somehow strange. Why do you think that? If you know something that makes you that confident, could you tell me? Rikachan stayed silent for a while, seemingly choosing what to say. Because... Because? She looked like she was lost on whether she should continue or not. As if she was troubled on whether it was okay for her to say it. That kind of expression. It's already been decided. There's no other way to say it. It's already been decided, huh? Really is just like a little girl to say something like that. I couldn't believe it was actually true. She was the only one saying such things with such confidence. My real mission, that I had forgotten about during this fun-filled day, resurfaced at the back of my mind. The kidnapping of the minister's grandson. Had the Onikafuchi Defense Alliance kidnapped the minister's grandson and already succeeded in negotiating the cancellation of the dam project? Did Kimiyoshi actually already know that and was just playing dumb? Was that what this girl was really telling me? Mm -hmm. Akasaka. The girl called out my name suddenly. What is it? Go back to Tokyo. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> huh? I wasn't only surprised at that, at that sudden command. Ever since I came to this village, I had never once mentioned I was from Tokyo. Based on my accent, she might have been able to guess where I was from. What was I getting so worked up over? It was probably the sudden and complete change in her mis in her demeanor. We should definitely go back to Tokyo right away. If not, you will woefully regret it. The girl had been holding my sleeve the entire time. She had been tugging at my sleeve since 
hurrying, hurriedly dragging me over to show me this wonderful view. But this was the adorable Rikachan who I had spent the entire day with. There was no way she could have been replaced with the doppelganger when I wasn't looking. She'd been holding onto my sleeve this entire time. But somehow this girl was someone other than Rikachan. She looked like Rikachan, but she wasn't. She was some girl I had never met before. That girl told me in a diff in an indifferent voice that I would eventually regret coming to this village from the bottom of my heart. That would be an incredibly pathetic thing to see. So I thought I'd warn you right now. Why would I come to regret it? Stop whining. I couldn't believe, couldn't believe that I was hearing such cold words coming from Rikachan's mouth. I just couldn't believe it. Jeez. Was somebody impersonating her? Using ventriloquism or something? Thinking that, I wanted to take a look around, but... The girl's gaze had me pinned down, making me unable to move. When you tried crossing the road when the... Don't walk sign was up. Did your parents finish explaining why it was dangerous before pulling you back to the sidewalk? They'd pull you back right away, wouldn't they? They'd pull you back before explaining why it was dangerous, wouldn't they? In other words, it's something like that. The girl I had spent time with, Rika Furde, would not speak like that. She would speak with acuteness, befitting her age, with brief, childish remarks, expressing her emotions honestly. She definitely wouldn't speak with such pointed words. I've warned you. Don't get the wrong idea. It's not like I'm saying this because I hate you. You don't need to tell somebody who's better off dead that they're in danger. Who are you? You're not Rikachan. <laughs> as soon as I accused her of not being Rikachan, she let out a strange, quiet giggle. It was a laugh not befitting of a child her age. It was like she was possessed by something. Her change was just that total and complete. Was Rikachan being attacked by some terrifying phenomenon? That occult idea came to mind without any sort of hesitation. Rikachan is acting strange. Somebody, help! Thinking that I'd yelled that, I turned to where the mayor was. I immediately realized he was looking at us with a smile. That's right, to him. It looked like nothing more than me and Rikachan fooling around. He didn't notice that there was something terrifying happening to her. Nakasaka is such a coward. <laughs> the girl had obviously grasped that I was afraid. Noticing that and calling me a coward, she laughed again. That cackling girl, approaching me in a strange manner while still laughing, lost her balance and fell flat on her face. Rikachan fell down. If it was just a while before, I would have extended a hand to help her up without hesitation. But now, extending a hand to this ominous girl who looked like Rikachan but wasn't, required a bit more courage than I had at the moment. Meep. The girl cried out as cried out thus. She then squirmed upright and dusted herself off. Afterwards, she looked around restlessly as a blank expression crept across her face. You've got to be kidding me. Was she making fun of me? That way of acting. It was as though, after being possessed by something, she had lost her memories of what happened. You're joking, right? Rika-chan? Me? I don't know if Rika-chan heard, had heard me or not. She just cried out like that, as if questioning herself. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Rika-chan one, too. Tea's ready. There's some snacks, too, so... Please come and have some. An old lady wearing a smock was waving energetically from the entrance of the office. Hey, mister! Hearing that there were snacks, Rikachan's expression had changed. Yay! A carefree smile. Oh, fuck. Rikachan's <laughs> foot flop is the worst. <laughs> that was a familiar smile. The one that belonged to the embodiment of my ideal daughter. Any hint of the creepy girl that was just there, spouting sinister words, had vanished. Come on, Rikachema. Wash your hands first. There aren't any manju here for dirty hands. I'll wash them real good. Meep. 
Mickey Town responded with vigor, running off to the washing station that was alongside the office. She stopped halfway, turning around to call me. If Akasaka doesn't hurry up, I'll eat his share of manju too. They're steaming fresh. Huh? Ah! People who don't wash their hands aren't allowed to eat any manju. No matter how you looked at it, that was Rikachan. Those words and the way she said them, no matter how you heard them, they were definitely Rikachan's. Come on now, mister. You're the adult here, so show, show her how it's done. The old lady urged me to wash my hands. Without any, without any resistance, I lined up beside Rikachan at the wash station. Splish bash. I was taking a bath. I stared at Rikachan, intent on washing her hands properly, like she had pro probably learned at school. Me? Did I do something wrong? Oh! By wrong, you mean... How I'm washing my hands. I only got four gold stickers for it. I'm probably bad at washing my hands. You're not doing anything wrong. If you're washing them that carefully, that's more than enough. But it's not, Akasaka. If you don't use a brush and clean out the dirt underneath your fingernails, you won't get a gold sticker. Uh, huh. Rigi-chan, you're very diligent. That's something to be proud of. Nipa! I was praised by Akasaka. No matter how you looked at it, it was Rikachan. There was no trace of that girl from before. Exactly what was that sinister girl? Rikachan, what was the meaning of what just happened now? Just now you told me to go back to Tokyo, didn't you? Did I say that? I was at a loss for words. She didn't remember what that girl just now had said. Like I would ever believe something as occult as that could happen. Like I would ever believe that Rikachan could be possessed by that strange girl and say those creepy things. Rikachan, you definitely said that. Meep. Sad meep. Her expression told me that. Despite my saying so, she had no idea. She wasn't playing dumb, she actually didn't know. Exactly what was that just now? Just a Rikachan had, I had let, let a look of confusion creep across my face. The two of us both looking like we had no idea what was going on. <laughs> Must have certainly been a humorous sight to behold. While partaking of tea and snacks, I was shown a propaganda film shot by the Defense Alliance that highlighted their resistance efforts. Older folks talked passionately on how long and grueling the fight against the dam was, but they fell on deaf ears. I was transfixed by Rikachan, who had... Heard these stories countless times before and was nodding off. Eventually, Rikachan noticed I was staring at her and smiled as she rubbed her eyes. The smile was Rikachan's after all. There was no hint of that sinister shadow. After that, my unreasonable fear of Rikachan lessened with the passing of time, but I could b by no means forget what had happened. It eventually grew dark. The mayor, had, mayor said that they had prepared dinner, but I said I would come again tomorrow and took my leave. I had to return to the hotel to file my regular report with the section chief. Uh, excuse me. I see. Well then, please come again tomorrow. If you phone, we'll send somebody to pick you up right away. I appreciate your hospitality. I'll probably come again and enjoy myself tomorrow. Yes, please do. It seems that Rikachama has taken a pretty big liking to you. Akasaka, are you coming again tomorrow? I finished after fifth period, so if you could come at around three o'clock, that would make me happy. Please come again. That pure smile urged me to do so. It wasn't a trace of that evil aura. Depending on what had happened next, all that might end up as nothing other than my hallucination. Thinking about it logically, if the daughter of the Furude household, one of the three families, had taken a liking to me, then this was a strong foothold for my investigation from here on out. It was like a free ticket for a reason to visit Anamizawa. If only I could treat that little in in incident as a figment of my imagination. Then having this girl who is the embodiment of my ideal daughter grow as so attached to me wasn't bad either. 
I had successfully dove into the belly of the Onikafuchi Defense Alliance and had the mayor as well as other important members of the Alliance welcome me with open arms. This was a great turn of events. However, I still felt uneasy. I would too. Getting back to the hotel, I forced down an almost painfully cold beer until I could clear my mind. The shock from that incomprehensibly strange incident continued to torment me. Has it? Bro, Tomatake. Get out! Get out now! Get out while you still can! Why are there so many tips? It's just front loading you, man. So there was a lot. This is. Okay. Questions. Is. Uh, our main character. Is our character. Going to eventually become Tomatake. I feel like she's going to say something about his name being weird and change it to Tomatake. She might give him a nickname and just sticks with it. Because if he tried to pull off going as Tomatake, Rika knows who he is. Yeah. Rika knows his actual name. So it could eventually be a nickname that she gives him and he sticks with. Um, To get closer to Mion, maybe. I don't. I don't know if that's the end goal. I know he's trying to figure it out. Again, if if this is Tomatake, why does he keep coming back? Because he just said <coughs> Rika is a reason to come back and visit sometimes. Yeah, but I don't know. Would would you want to come back to this fucking village after? I mean, if the after damn project, get out. I mean, if the dam project gets cancelled, why would he be afraid of... Well, is... Correct me if I'm wrong. Is... In the normal timeline, the dam project already cancelled? Because of the, uh, the murder, the dismembering? Yeah, it's the dismembering and, that cancelled it. And all the other murders yeah. following suits, they just stopped the construction. And did you notice something else... Because um, otherwise, that would be a big talk. That'd be a big part of the story in the other chapters, if it was still going on. on. So it's it's done. So why is Tomatake still coming back? And it's not for is, his job. What what? It's not for his job. What my question is is who is um? How does he get to know uh, Takano? Takano. Uh, well, unless she's a cover up as well. Um, Takano is a nurse at the hospital. It, if this is Tomatake, there's a good chance we could meet Takino in this chapter as well. Um, I don't know if she's but a cover. I, she kills Tomatake! Allegedly. In the, in the third one? Allegedly. We don't know for sure. We just know he was she was carrying around his corpse. Well, maybe his corpse. She was carrying around his bike. His corpse may have been in the trunk. <laughs> We don't know for sure. We assume. This is plenty of conjectures to be made. Okay, let's look at the tips and then keep talking about this, because I have some things. Oh. Silky smooth. Silky smooth. Going smoothie. <laughs> Going smooth. Going smoothie. Silky smooth. Silky smooth. The sounds of the car grew closer, followed by the sound of it breaking as the engine cut out. At that moment, his up until now lackadaisical footsteps grew decisive as the man in the room dashed up to the wall beside the window and carefully peered outside. It was his comrade's car. Comrade. Even so, he still didn't relax his guard. Eventually, the sound of footsteps approached the door. Thump, 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 thump. It was the passcode. Um. I'm back. Open the door already. Ah, you must be tired. I'm opening it now. After the locks were undone and the door opened, a man appeared, his arms laden with the swallowing plastic grocery bags. The bags in his hand had seven's mart written on them, with bread and milk cartons able to be glimpsed within. The contents of those bags were then spread out over a sheet on the floor. I bought some cup noodles. So Boil some water. <laughs> What's the kid doing? Huh? He's been sleeping the entire time. Thank God he's not causing any trouble. 
He did struggle a bit when he was about to shit himself. Uh, this mm-hmm. is the kidnapping. Yes. One of them does not know how to speak right. <laughs> Duh. Not... Oh, is is that this? This is the guy. Is this? I think this is a continuation of the previous scene where they're pulling the kid out of the trunk. Yeah. Don't let them crap his pants. <laughs> It'd suck if it starts smelling like an outhouse in it. In it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Check the gap every now and then. We don't want it to get loose to keep it tight. But not so tight that he stop breathing. <laughs> I said I know. Huh? Didn't I ask you to pick up another can of gas from the portable stove? We're out. You never asked that, you jit! You itchy! You never asked that! You see it! God, seriously! Come on, work! <laughs> Damn it! He rattled the portable stove as he struggled to get it too light. To seeing that, the man who went to buy supplies let out a deep sigh. And with a backwards glance at the sight, he began to walk to the corner of the room. Can this dude please talk more often? <laughs> the kidnapped boy was sprawled out on a sheet that was spread out on the floor. Boy, you doing okay? <laughs> of course, the man didn't assume the kid was able to hear that question. That's because the boy's ears were plugged, with his eyes and ears thoroughly covered by packing tape. Also, his mouth was gagged with a thin, twisted up towel. <laughs> because of that, the boy was unable to close his, eye- his mouth properly, his cheeks sticking with his own saliva. Of course, that wasn't the only reason. Both his arms were tied tightly behind his back with a leather belt. You seem to be doing okay. At least, you're not gonna die. If Grandpa wanted to play tough, we might have had a tough enough, a lump off in here. It'd be great if we don't have to. If the main family says we do, though, tough luck. I can't even imagine what kind of cool things they do to us. They let us do. The family says not one scratch on them. I know. Uh, so it seems that he's going to be away for that time being. The minister is discreetly withdrawing the dam project. The Namizawa dam is indefinitely postponed. I wonder when they're letting the boy go. I just want to be done with this already. The main family seems to be engaged in the timing. I don't know when it'll be, but it'll probably be soon. Isn't that great, kid? You'll be let go real soon. <laughs> I feel like... The one that talks normally is like the nice guy, and then the good one, cop, dumb cop. The, more like the one that just wants to lop, up, lop off body parts and is cruel. The men didn't know if their voices were heard by the boy. For him, there was nothing he could do but continue to sleep to escape his harsh reality. Mon Putney, what are we gonna do about the gas? We can't eat the cup of noodles raw. If we're the gas, say something, James. So Why don't you lick my boss? <laughs> Why I like rainy days. You know what I like? Rainy days? Rainy days. It's the rainiest of days. The weather forecast had predicted that it wouldn't rain at all this, this entire week. It's not that I hate sun, sunny days or anything. But every day is the same unchanging sunny weather, however, anybody would long for a rainy cloud or two. If it's simply clear skies for a week, a month, or a year, anybody would long for a rain cloud or two. The weather Did you just say that? The weather specialist said that they had carefully scrutinized a large quantity of past data, so it wouldn't be so likely for the forecast to be wrong. I knew as much. But even then, there were there was occasionally a day where I was hoping that it would be wrong as I stared up into the clear blue sky. When I was being mischievous and hoping so, I waited and waited, feeling almost suffocated by the boring blue sky, undisturbed by a single cloud. If you could die from that suffocating feeling, then the population of Earth probably wouldn't have increased at this point. In other words, the only person who was being suffocated by this was me. And so, I welcomed the summer, e- summer evenings or not even the weather forecast could predict a sudden shower. If I were to explain it like this, would you understand a bit more of how I feel? Let's say that 
tonight's dinner was going to be curry rice. Of course, curry. When you called down to the dinner table, what was waiting for you was instead an eggplant and bell pepper stir fry. This is just on your mother's whim, by the way. I would be delighted by such whimsy. I don't really like eggplants or bell peppers, but still, I would be delighted. The fact that the pre-established routine of curry rice had been broken would be amusing. If tonight was repeated a hundred times, and a hundred times you had to eat curry rice. Yeah, for just this one night. This was That was changed to an eggplant and bell pepper stir fry. There was no way you couldn't enjoy that chance happening. I hate pre-established routines. I really hate when things are all decided beforehand. I have no love for boredom. I always get my hopes up that something today will be different from yesterday no matter how trivia. It's been decided that this entire week starting today was going to be clear skies. The weather forecast decided upon it so that so the god of weather must feel obliged to do so. But who's to say that a rain cloud might not just show up on day on a wind? Something that nobody could say for sure, but because that thought remains in this world, a creature such as myself can continue living without being suffocated. Tomorrow will probably be a hot and clear day. However, I'm the only one that knows that predetermined fate, even with but a slim 1% chance, sometimes changes. Why did that number look so weird? Hoping for that 1%, I hung up upside down. Weather charms on my sunlit eaves troughs. In the end, I spend my days waiting for those unexpected things in life to happen. I pondered why I was hoping for it. Why was I hoping for a rain cloud? The answer was simple. I find my fill of clear skies. Then what was I hoping for a rain cloud? The answer was simple. The fact that it was going to be sunny tomorrow was boring. So why was I hoping for a rain cloud? In the end, it doesn't really matter whether it rains or shines tomorrow. Basically, it was just that the rain would water my heart, which was withered from boredom. That's why, rather than a TV drama where, there, where the plot's already been decided, I prefer to look up at the sky. What the fuck? <laughs> what is that? That's gotta have some significant meaning somewhere. What the fuck was that? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you explain it better? Rainy days. Rainy, sunny days are boring. I like rainy days. So when, we don't know who's talking, by the way. Yeah. We don't know who's saying these things. <laughs> Somebody is bored as hell and wants <laughs> something to happen. That felt like a filler episode. <laughs> it's like... Side path, by the way. Alright, let's get back on Smiley T. Time for Mr. Silky Smooth. Silky Smooth. Oh, there he is. Your blood pressure has improved. I need to get back into these voices. I've been lucky thus far have not having to do voices. Your blood pressure has improved. For you to recover this quickly at your age, I'm rather impressed. At this rate, you'll still be kicking after a couple hundred more years. Oyo son. The young doctor in his medical coat said that as he undid the blood pressure cuff from the arm of the old woman tucked away in her, in her futon. Oh, is this, uh. This is. This uh, is the old. Xion's this is uh, Shion, Miona Shion's grandma. You're a very good physician, Dr. Arie. If a persistent old fart like me doesn't hurry up and die, I'll just be in the way of you, young folk. <laughs> the old lady, Oreo, laughed faintly with a broad smile on her face. Then, turning towards the sliding door, she called out in a strong voice. Is Shimiko-san or Taiko-san there? Bring some tea for Dr. Irie! The sound of rushed footsteps from the hallway drew closer, till finally the door slid smoothly open. What it revealed was a young girl. It looked like the old lady's granddaughter. Shimiko-san already left for the day. Do you need something? Yeah, make some barley tea for Dr. Irie. Okay, got it. Did you want some tea, Granny? Or would black tea be better? 
Want lots of milk and sugar? I'll measure it out myself, so you don't have to put any in. Just bring the sugar jar and some milk when you bring the tea. KK! Why does she look so freaking young? Because this is like seven years ago. Or five years ago. How many years ago is this? Seven. But what? So she's ten. But Rika! It's not. Then Rika's. Four? Five? Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Get out! <off. laughs> the girl named Mion, after giving a rather uninterested response to her taskmaster of a grandmother, returned to the hallway. Pour oh, the doctor's tea in the cups for the guests. And make sure you bring a coaster, too! Also, make sure to dry out the uh, outside the glass, okay? Yeah, yeah. You're such a fussy pants. A tired voice wafted a reply from down the hallway. The apathetic tone of voice was far from unusual. The old lady let out a wry smile slip across her face as she chided the girl. Jeez. That girl just won't learn. Nothing I ever scold her about sticks. Now, now, Oreo son. You don't have to say that. Myun Chan is doing her best in her own way. Even though she's so young. Her mother was the same way. Couldn't teach her anything. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> so her mother's mother must be exactly the same, no? The old lady burst out laughing. Her expression showed she hadn't taken that comment the wrong way. Dr. Iriye, I'm sorry, but could you open the doors for me? Seems there's a nice cool breeze outside. The cool chirping of the Higurashi had at some point started leaking through the gap in the doorway. Irie stood up and opened the door a bit. A refreshing breeze pushed out the stale air that had built up in the room. It's gotten fairly hot during the day, but the evenings are still rather cool, huh? They. <laughs> Aren't they? Aren't they? Aren't they? Aren't they? Aren't they? It was almost downright chilly last night. Yeah, those types of mornings and evenings are another one of Hanami's always fine points. Here he replied with a smile as he returned to sit on the cushion beside the old lady. Another two of them, for a little while, soaked in the voices of the Hirashi. I'm gonna try and live to a hundred until the business with the dam is proper finished. I ain't kicking the bucket just yet. <laughs> <laughs> to get the government to withdraw a decision they've already made is a fairly difficult thing to do. The way this country does things is like turning a millstone. A heavy one at that. A millstone? Don't you know? A millstone! Yuri quickly affirmed that of course he knew what the old lady was talking about. <laughs> For he knew full well that Oreo didn't have... Didn't like having her stories interrupted. The Millstone Sea can grind anything to a pulp. Millstone Sea can grind anything to a pulp. It's rather impressive, but you see it doesn't turn that easy because it's a rather heavy millstone. Lots of people have to work in unison to get it even budge. It's that type of millstone. Irie pursed his lips, listened quite... I was heard the entire time. Fuck! I got it wrong again! This millstone says! <laughs> Eventually, Mune returned with some tea laid out on a tray. <laughs> Seeing that Oreo was talking in, in a good mood, she qu quietly knelt down and laid out the seats for the barley tea. Barley and black tea! Careful not to interrupt. That's why when it gets going, it's not that easy to stop. It takes the most... I'm doing like a combination of them now. It takes the most effort to move it right before it starts turning. Everybody hates that, so everybody keeps pushing along with the rest. You're talking about friction, right? I get what you're saying. So, in other words, if there's some sort of mistake and the mouse down suddenly stops turning and to get it to turning again with a great deal of power, more or less. Certainly! 
To get a project that's been suspended and going again takes quite a lot of work. It's a millstone that isn't easily stopped. But once it's stopped, it'll never turn again. It's that kind of millstone. It'd be nice if there was some way to get that millstone to stop, wouldn't it? Fuck, I got it wrong again! <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice if there was some way to get that millstone to stop, wouldn't it? When Irie responded with that, Mion and the old lady suddenly sunk into silence. <laughs> Irie, instinctively so, thinking he had said something rude, searched in his small panic for the words to correct himself. But that silence wasn't the result of rude words. What crept across Mion and the old lady's faces were contemptuous smiles. The atmosphere surrounding Irie suddenly froze, leaving him flabbergasted, thinking that the scornful smiles creeping across both of their faces was the result of some mistake of his. You'd only grow afraid. <laughs> it hadn't been that long at all since he was enveloped by silence. However, unable to stand it, Irie can only let out a weak laugh. Fuck, that was Irie's laugh. God damn it. Let me know who's talking before they talk. Irie's laugh eventually spread to me and the old lady. Not knowing exactly what they were laughing at, their laughter left a lingering chill. The only ones not laughing were the Higarashi, who continued their simple and unchanging course. I don't think you got one right. I feel like I got a couple right. <laughs> okay. Is there anything we can make from those? No, not really. Not really. Other than the fact that Oreo and Neo. They did say the main family. So the main family is... The Sonazakis. As we know, the Sonazakis. So they did perform the kidnapping. Uh, it is definitely heavily implied. It'd be weird if it wasn't them. Unless the main family is... The mayor still, which I don't... Kimiyoshi? Think. I really doubt it. I really doubt Kimiyoshi's behind this. Somehow, I really doubt Kimiyoshi even knows. I feel like the two families that are involved in this is Furude and... And even then, I don't think the Furude family's really in on it. Because, remember, at some point, the Furude family gets killed. Right. Like, Rika's mom and dad eventually both die. Due to Zakas. Yeah. Where, I believe, the father died and the mom gets demoned away, or the other way around. Um. So, if anyone is to blame... If even the other families even know about it, is the Sonazakis. Yeah. It's very possible that Kimiyoshi and the Furude family doesn't even know that this kidnapping happened. But, Rikichan does know. I have a good feeling Rikichan does know. Because she, she sneaks in, she's tiny, she can mull her way into a room. Unaware, people unaware of her being there. And she's like, I got all the digs. I got all the digs. They're, I know everything. Get out. Get out. I'm but letting yeah, you. Rika is showing some signs of being demon. Something that she said is we can't leave. We can't go to the city. Well, yeah, because if you remember what they mentioned for uh, Oyashiro Sama's curse, if you leave the city, you get cursed. If you leave the city without Orishiro Sama's permission. Also That's why um uh, that's why uh Reina's family That's why Reina went nuts when they when they moved away. They had to move back because Reina went nuts because of Orishiro Sama's curse. But another thing, wasn't it uh that the demons couldn't leave? I don't remember if the if it ever mentioned the demons weren't allowed to leave. But the demons wouldn't want them to leave. The demon certainly wouldn't want them to leave. Um, as per... It, it's hard to say. It's, it's hard to make conjectures at that. Um, but... Because it's like they said... She said we can't live anywhere else. Like, 
It sounds well. Like... It's also a little girl saying that. Yeah, but but that little girl is Rika. Yeah, Rika is very, very smart. Too smart for her own good. She knows too many things. We have to get rid of her. Right. So it's, it's, it's gonna make my day if this is Tomatagi because we it, have not. It is a good chance it could be Tomatake. It's just interesting to see where the where this story is going. It's just going to be interesting to see what what happens. Um, and I think the beginning of this, um, the character refers to that this time as a dreadful period, where the uh, the outcome of this is very possible that he witnesses the dismemberment. I don't know. I feel like the dismemberment might be the climax of this arc. What I was thinking is he's having this flashback before he goes to his last visit. And oh, into visit. the current timeline. Yeah, into the current timeline, and then he gets killed, and that's going to be the climax. And um, Oishi is going to know that he was killed because... He got found out. But I feel like Oishi and um, the head of... The Sonazakis? No, the head of the uh, the police of uh, Onikafuchi village are the only two that know about him going undercover. It's true. Because he did tell Oishi that... Yeah, Oishi eventually squeezed it out of him. Yeah. He knew that that he was not there for any typical reason. It's definitely for an atypical reason. Yeah. He really did slip up for saying that his wife was in childbirth. I knew he was gonna do that. Oh yeah, that definitely raised suspicions for Rico. Yeah. She's like, then what are you doing here? Yeah. Uh, That's sir. no good. <laughs> Get out. Get out. Alright, so I believe that's all the conjectures and observations we can make at the moment. Yep. We have so, until more. next time, bye-bye! Bye, guys!